Welcome to the Fit Vegan Podcast, the show where we help you optimize your health, fitness, and mindset on a whole food plant-based lifestyle. My name is Maxim Siguain. I am a former triathlete, powerlifter, bodybuilder, and basketball player, and I've been vegan for over nine years. I'm also the founder and CEO of Fit Vegan Coaching, which has helped over 500 vegans from 20 different countries to completely transform their bodies and their health. I'm excited for you to hear today's episode. Let's get into the show. All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fit Vegan Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest. I have my beautiful, lovely fiance, Ivy. Ivy, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Good. It's been a while. I know. It's weird <laughs> to record in person, especially with you. Yeah. Um, so I know it's been a, a highly requested episode. You guys had some questions, and uh, we're going to spend the rest of our life together. So I figured I'd introduce her to, to the podcast. It was, it was a big deal. <laughs> thank you for having me. Of course. I'm very excited. So yeah, people had a lot of questions about us because um, I'm pretty intense vegan and you know you were like looking into plant base when we met and how we met so um yeah w what would you like to to share is there anything you want to say to the listener before we jump into the questions um no i guess i just want to let them know that they have to be ready to get to know the real you because you know in front of everyone you are the coach maxime but behind the scenes it's really a lot more interesting and a real person. So I want to take them to that journey so they understand you behind the scene and how you live your life with me. Yeah, I'm interested. I've never shared any of that. So <laughs> It's a bit personal, it, but it let's is. get to it. We'll, we'll, br we'll bring a new side. So I think one of the questions I see on your list here is how did we meet? Um, so I'll take, I'll share that one. I'll share my side and you can definitely share your side yeah, there's after. There's always two sides in every story. So yeah. Go so ahead. my side, it was a, I slid in her DM basically in a very polite way. I'm always looking to connect with my community and always asking like, Hey, how can I improve the content? You know, are you interested in like plant-based nutrition, fitness? Like how can I help? Um, and I think, I, I think I thought I had saw you liked one of my posts and that's why I reached out, but apparently she didn't. But I thought I did. And so I reached out, took the conversation from there. We chatted for a bit and then we met up for, uh, which was supposed to be a coffee, turned into lunch and lunch and then turned into a dinner <laughs> on October 2nd of last year. It was just celebrated our one year. Yes. Um, so my side now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a DM on Instagram and I never really checked my messages, right? Which I told you before, so it's a bit weird. I actually saw yours and it was very type of like you're full of yourself because you said, thank you for liking my post. And I was like, who is this person? I've never seen him before. So then of course I had to check it out and look which post I actually liked maybe accidentally, <laughs> but yeah, I didn't like any of your posts, but then I think I, it was something with like Robert. Yeah, because we have a common friend, right, yeah. Robert Sheik. So I did look at your Instagram profile and saw something about you, especially when you were speaking, which was actually what attracted me to you and made me meet you for coffee, lunch, late lunch, whatever, dinner. Yeah, we needed to, like, we both had a, I was supposed to hang out with Nimai that day, but things changed, and you were supposed to hang out with your friend. So a lot of things had to happen for us to meet that day because you had a really busy schedule and you're never down in Venice when I was living in Venice at the time. Yeah, exactly. I'm always out and about every weekend. I usually plan like out of town with friends or my work or something like that. So I was never really home, which was perfect timing when everything happened. It had to be like just the right time for us yeah. to meet. God had a plan. And now here we are a year, over a year later and we're engaged and you're in Canada in the freezing cold <laughs> with me. You had to leave California. <laughs> yeah, doing a podcast. Yeah, doing a it. podcast and it's the freezing cold outside and potentially raining a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's how we met. That's how ultimately how I went. Started from, from Instagram, met in person and then it was about first sight. She's like, I love this tall, sexy man. And <laughs> yeah, let's see. What did people say? <laughs> what was the first impression of each other when we first met? Um, 
I thought you were just like a really happy and joyful person, which you are. I'm sure people can tell on camera. Like you're just a happy, joyful person. And yeah, we, we just connected to just connect, to be honest. I think there was, there was no intention behind any of it for, for you and I. It was just like, I'm new to LA and then we chatted and it just connected. And so, you know, just blatantly no, no, no intentions, not even as a friend or anything. It was just yeah. to, to connect. And yeah, you just had a really amazing like childlike energy which i i really like you're very like playful and go with the flow and our first date was definitely a go with the flow type of date <laughs> with with what happened so yeah you want to take them <laughs> to that story um okay. well my first impression of you of course is handsome tall i didn't know what was in his brain at that point i was just <laughs> like he's just hot so why not let's have this early dinner and then I got to know you and I was like, wow, he has a lot of intellectual thoughts and just a very intelligent person, which I'm very, very interested to get to know because to me, physical is important, but not as important as mental intelligence. It's just not a lot of people have it. <laughs> so thank goodness you do. I have to come from Canada to LA to grab you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, our our, fir our first date, we went to, was it True Health Kitchen? True Food Kitchen? Is that what it's called? It's in Venice. True Food Kitchen. I think it's called True Food Kitchen. Yeah, it was a really good spot. I had really good vegan food. And after lunch, after dinner, I was like, I don't want this to end. And like, I haven't been on a date in a really, really long time. And so I was like, my brain goes automatically like, you want to go play bowling? <laughs> She's like, the 12 year old in me came. I was like, you want to go play bowling? Uh, and then you said yes. And I was like, oh, shit. All right, cool. So <laughs> I went on Google, look for bowling alleys near us. And I found the closest one because I don't want to drive. Like, I don't want us to drive yeah. too far. But I don't know the area. So exactly. we drive, we drive to that bowling alley and it's dark it's a sketchy neighborhood um homeless everywhere homeless people everywhere and we get to the bowling alley we get out the car we go in there's cops there's metal detectors it says no guns or knives allowed for a bowling alley <laughs> yeah, and there were like all those people hanging out and like the cops are actually the security which is unusual for a bowling alley i mean i came yeah. from a small town of simi valley which you know like we don't see anything like that um yeah very interesting i thought he wanted me dead at night yeah. <laughs> i was like this guy's gonna get me killed i was like wow this looks so catchy sketchy but i'm not a sketchy person i just i didn't know the neighborhood so yeah we walked in there and it was actually busy it was actually full yeah. we had to wait a really long time to play so i was like well let's just go back to, to venice uh, what was the era we were in? Santa Monica. Oh, we were in Culver City. In Culver City, yeah. So don't go play bowling there. <laughs> and so on the way back, we were at a red light, and then we saw a banner on the side because there was like construction, and there was a banner promoting a movie. I think it was Venom. It's Venom. Yeah, Venom. So it was Venom, and I was like, you want to go watch that instead? And she was like, yeah. And so we went to the movie theater, and then it just, yeah, kicked off from there, and then <laughs> turned the night around from a sketchy bowling alley to the movie theater. Yeah, it was very nice, and then we didn't want the night to end, so. <laughs> it, was, it was a 24-hour date. <laughs> was it? No. Yeah, it was what a 24-hour. We stayed together for 24 hours. Yeah. We had, like, we had like vegan bubble bubblegum ice cream the next day, uh, which I discovered is her favorite, best. which is also my favorite. Um, yeah, I walked Abbott Kenny. Yeah, it was a good time. It was a 24-hour date. Yeah, so that yeah. was the first date. Yeah, <laughs> and here we are over a year later. <laughs> so that's yeah. how do you get together, same thing. Okay, so a lot of people always ask me this too. Um, how do you deal with each other when he's vegan and you're not? Yeah, well, so the, the <laughs> fir our first day, technically, the first time we met, you're like, are you okay if I eat fish? I'm like, yeah, it's, you do whatever you want to do. Like, I'm not going to impose any limits on anyone. Um, I was like, I'm just not going to eat it. But yeah, in a relationship, we're fine now. Like I, I, you know this. Like I will never eat animal products for the rest of my life. Like it's freaking tattooed inside my arm, fit vegan. Right. Um, but yeah, you've been you, you know, you still have some 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 fish here and there. That's pretty much the only thing left. But you're eating mostly, mostly plant-based. Plant -based. Yeah. yeah. Um, I even promote for you know a plant-based company. So I'm very active when it comes to um, transitioning. I'm actually in the middle of transitioning more plant-based when I met you. That's mm -hmm. why. Um, although it's hard for me to give up sushi, which is one it's thing. It's the only thing, yeah. Know. But slowly, surely, I'm trying. Like, you know, I eat 
what 90 percent plant-based right now yeah when we go probably more than that to be honest like you we you love sushi you want to order it often (laughs) but we don't actually eat sushi that often yeah that's true yeah so So you're mostly plant-based and around the home like everything is pretty much plant-based except like your fish and that's it yeah and i was never really like a big meat eater Um, i've always been like more vegetables and fruit so it wasn't a, a very hard transition for me to even like go mostly plant-based with you so i enjoy plant-based and your mom cooks like everything so good so i would eat her food anytime any day yeah yeah i i th- we deal with it pretty just to answer your question like we deal with it really easily i don't think there's any like struggles like i just well you don't judge me for <laughs> no. that i mean you encourage but you're never like pushing anything to me so it's great because i want to be you know ultimately plant-based but slowly but surely yeah well you know i i know i know i made a post about this and you're like i'm looking at you because i said like how do you help your partner transition to plant base and a big part is to not give it a push because how turned off would you be if i was in your face all the time when you ate sushi like you would be like you would be really turned off it would close off it'd probably affect our relationship and it wouldn't be great so like everyone's on their own journey i'm just i'm just there the seed's been planted i'm just watering it every day that's good you're doing such a great job (laughs) keep at it (laughs) I mean, I support you, obviously, and I do encourage people. I do have friends who are vegan, so it's not like a new space for me. Yeah. So, yeah. And what was the other question? You can bring your iPad closer if you want. This uh, is on raw, uh, unedited podcast. Uh, how we were before we met. Uh, you want to go first? No, you go. <laughs> well, um, for some of you know from my personal story, I was... I was healing and um, I was just figuring out how to live my life on my own again. Um, And I had some really powerful experiences that I was in LA, some like healing ceremonies that allowed me to uh, break through through all these things, heal a lot of these things. And actually it happened at the perfect time because I don't think we would have been able to be together if I didn't go through those experiences that like changed everything for me. And that's when I transitioned from Lucky to Maxim because when I met you, I think the first time I introduced myself as Lucky and then I was like, no, Maxim, because that's when I was like transitioning to me going back to my original name because of like all the healing work. And so to me, it's just like a, a brand new world had opened. I could be me. I could be fully me for the first time in a long time. And then when I met you, it just felt like a gift from God. Like, that's how I felt. And I've told you this before. Uh, yeah. I feel the same way. So before we met, um, I was traveling a lot before COVID happened. And the funny thing is he didn't even know who I was. Like, from the poker world, I was one of the Royal Flush girl or Royal Flush crew now. Um, that traveled the world, kind of like known in the poker industry. <laughs> has no idea which i love he didn't know i really modeled or did anything like that i think I he didn't nothing even nothing about you right he yeah. didn't even like look at my instagram <laughs> so so it's great like because most people you know like kind of knew me from there and has this perception of who i am right or mm. to them so i like that you got to know me for who i really am um, from our conversation that day. So again, before we met, I was already sure of who I was. I was just looking for a partner to be with. And Mm -hmm. that was the hard part. Mm -hmm. I remained single for about five or six years. And, you know, I just focus on me, my career, where I want to be. I became a whole again, so I can find that other person not to be my other half but to complement that wholeness that i have right Mm -hmm. and people always look for oh you need your better half i don't really believe in better half because to me and we talked about this before you have to be whole to be able to pour some love happiness and everything else from yourself to others right yeah so i want somebody that's also whole and then when I found you, it's like, whoa, there you are. Like, just perfect harmony. And it was it was effortless, mm-hmm. right? When we met, it was just, like, so easy. It was like we reconnected after a really long time. That's exactly what it felt. I yeah. actually felt like I knew you for Ever. a thousand lifetimes, but then we were just reconnecting yeah. in this time. 
Yeah, it was um, it was like finding your partner that's like gone, but then you met again. So it was weird. It was very weird, but it was definitely like an attraction. Call it what it is from the universe, your soulmate, your twin flame. But when we were together, it was just like so powerful that I felt whole. Mm. So, yeah, and then I told myself I'll never let this one go. <laughs> Felt good. And you didn't because we're yeah. here in the freezing cold of Canada. <laughs> yeah. I wish we were still in California. I gave up the California sun for nice, gloomy, It's only for a few months. We'll be able Canada. to go back. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. As long as we're together. It's been a fun ride with you. Yeah. Yeah, talking about rides, we did a lot of rides. We spent a <laughs> lot of time in the car. But, you know, people say, like, get in or do a road trip with your potential partner as, like, a test if so you guys can, like, enjoy each other yeah. and spend time with oh, each other. You're going to kill each other. We, we spent, like, over 30 hours in the car from all the, like, driving to Vegas to, to Arizona to Utah, Utah to Grand Canyon to L.A. to San Francisco. Like, we spent a lot of time in the car. And time with you in the car just flies by. Yeah. Except I sleep. But, yeah. yeah, Ivy's the worst. <laughs> she's the so I always make sure that I drive because I want to make sure that Ivy's resting. But she's like, yeah, don't worry, baby. I will stay up with you. I'll stay awake. And then every time she says that, within five minutes, I turn around and she's just like knocked out on the corner. I'm like a big baby. Once that car starts like driving, I'm just out. But then I wake up and I'm like, hey, you okay? Yeah, there's like 30 minutes left at a drive. It's it's always within like five minutes of you telling me you're going to stay up. You just fall asleep every time. At least I'm consistent, okay? Yeah, you should just not tell me <laughs> and you just stay up with me. But no, we, we have a fun time on those road trips and we probably... Have a lot of talks. Yeah, and we what, lived in like 30 different homes almost in the past year. Oh man, we Airbnb us so many times. We mastered moving around, <laughs> packing. You're very good at packing stuff. Like I just lives on the road for a long time, just like you. It's right. Yeah, for for the people that don't know, I'm obviously Canadian, which is why we're in Canada right now. But I was in the states. I was I just moved from Tulum, Mexico, to LA, and I was going to stay there for a bit, and then moved to Costa Rica. And then I met Ivy, and then plans changed. And then so I was like, well, let me just stay in L.A. to see how this goes. Yeah. And then I um, couldn't, couldn't get an apartment because I wasn't a, a, a resident. And so eventually we ended up getting a home together. But we probably did like, yeah, 25, 30-ish different Airbnbs throughout the time until we finally got a place together. Yeah, we definitely um, <laughs> moved a lot. Yeah, I funded Airbnb last year for <laughs> sure. <laughs> we should get some money back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, All right. What was the next question? Uh, how do you deal with conflicts and communicate with each other about difficult things? This is pretty oh. serious. And yeah. We have this. Get closer to the mic a little bit. There you go. <laughs> nose is wrong. <laughs> um, so how, how do we deal with, with conflict? <gasps> oh, yeah. It's a long journey from yeah. the beginning of time to where we are now. I yeah. mean, you're definitely the verbal one. Mm -hmm. You love to talk things out and get everything out of your system and you try to do the same with me except i am not the type um i like to be quiet and it's basically i take it all in and then process mm -hmm. and before i speak and it takes a long time for me to do it so you definitely have your own style of dealing with things and i have my own yeah but we we'll learn to compromise yeah, I, it's definitely been a learning curve because like when I, when I grew up, my parents like, you don't go to bed angry. And so my dad, if there was an issue, my dad would force me to stay up until the issue was addressed. Like two, three hours later, he would make sure that like, if I didn't want to talk, he would stay up with me until we resolved it before I went to bed. Yeah, so it's like ingrained in me at this point that when there's an issue, you talk about it, you don't go to bed angry. And also I'm so used to having those really hard conversations and that to show up and to and to lead them because of my previous experiences that i just naturally do it like there'll never be a hard conversation where i don't step up because if i don't then i told you this like if i don't step up for our conversations because i don't care about the person like and so if i do show up and i like push a little bit because i love you and i want this to work <laughs> yeah and i totally understand it and then this is where we are so different with dealing with um, difficult things, right? So I learned that 
I can't just say anything that I might regret telling you. Mm -hmm. So I keep that in me and like try to really process in my head and like, you know, I'm like talking to myself and man, like, is this right? Is this something like, you know, is it a big deal or is it not? Is, mm -hmm. Am I overreacting? So I tend not to rush into like talking to you about things because of that, because I really process it. Mm -hmm. But then also I like to sleep and then in the morning kind of like discuss it if I still remember because usually you know I don't yeah you just forget about it <laughs> I forget about I don't it. forget about it <laughs> and I'm like no longer angry I don't even know what we were arguing about and yeah. it's usually smaller things it's like nonsense it's like I'm just in a bad mood I'm like sleepy I'm tired I'm hungry and then all these things kind of like stems out from there yeah so that's why to me it's not a really big deal but if it was then we usually talk, talk it out or fight <laughs> before hey, it's, it's part of it like those those hard conversations are part of relationship right. right like we're humans too and we have yeah our way of dealing with conflict and confrontation and not always the best but as long as we're willing to improve on it i'm definitely the opposite i i can't keep things in my brain i have to say them out loud because if i say them out loud it's kind of like they're on a whiteboard and then i can organize them once yeah. they're out there then i can organize my thoughts and be like oh this goes here like this is happening because of that i can't do that internally but for for relationship for business for any hard conversation like i have to put it out there that's why i have a seven foot whiteboard in my office because i just need to like see it to process it no so. it's good because you learn now that this is just the way i am and i learned that that's just the way you are and you know, you do force me to like talk things out, which is good because then I'm learning to actually verbalize and like, you know, like get my thoughts out there. And you're mm -hmm. never really like mean or anything. You're always supportive and you always like try to understand. And then you do accept like, you know, if you, if it was your mistake, you admit to it. I'm a little harder on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I always get around to it. I'm not just not always the most receptive at the start. I know that about myself. Like I'll, I'll be defensive, but then if it is actually, I will always go back and admit or improve on it. All right. Which you are very good. And I usually do the same. It takes a little longer to do. Yeah, we each have a process. You do it. That's all right. That's what matters. <laughs> Cause I'm always right. Yeah, exactly. Cause you're always right. <laughs> Take notes, men out there. 99%. 1%, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. What was the other question? That's a big one. That is a big one. How does a healthy and unhealthy relationship look like to you? Um, I think where we don't communicate. And if we, if we don't want to spend time together and we're not supportive of each other, we're not communicating, I think that would be the big thing, right? I think when we met, we were pretty clear on what like how goals. we how we operate in our goals right i was like i want to have a really massive impact in the world and honestly i, I looking back i was probably a dick about it but i was like i have these big ambitions i don't want anyone in my life that would dim those ambition because to me if i'm not fulfilling those ambitions there's no point for me to even be on this earth and so that is what i'll do till i die and so i've always been like clear of like this is what i'm going to do and then i was probably a dick in the way that i said it, it was probably like really intense but no, it wasn't intense. It was clear, yeah. which I like. I don't like people beating around the bush, you know? So you told me what you wanted from the beginning. If I wasn't matching that, then it's not going to work, Yeah. which is, you know, I appreciate because I have the same thing. Like, first thing first, you showed flexibility and understanding and compassionate from the time that before we even met. Because, like, I keep changing oh, yeah. my, my time to meet you. And there's just things that keeps happening that day. And I was like, oh, my God, he's going to, like, bail on me. Most people do because they have no patience, compassionate. They just don't understand. They're not like me. I'm very flexible when it comes to schedule. Yeah. Because uh, the industry, the entertainment industry is always that way. There's always audition, casting, yada, yada, yeah. right? You know that. So you came from the same one. Um, but to find someone who truly understands that and being so understanding and kind was like extra. I was like, I'll pay for dinner if you just. <laughs> I laughed so hard. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you changed the plan and then it's like, it was like three hours later. I was like, yeah. 
I just went shopping. I bought a MacBook Pro. I was like, I just went shopping. Yeah. I was like, cool. And then you're like, oh, I'll be a little bit later. I'm like, that's fine. I'll just wait. And then we no. met at the restaurant. You said, I'm going to eat regardless. You come or not. I'll be yeah. here. So I was like, oh, great. So I'll just join. Yeah. It's like, uh, I was really comfortable being alone. Yeah. So I was like, oh, if you come, great. And if you don't, then, you know, it wasn't meant to be. And then when you called me, he's like, I'll pay for dinner. I was like, for what? Like, just show up whenever you show up. Yeah, I felt so bad. I'm like, just stay there. I'll pay for dinner. But, you know, it was just, it showed so much to me that you stayed there and you were so kind and nice about it. And it wasn't even fake. It's just who you are. So I... Really I was going to have a good meal if you didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's why you're comfortable with yourself. Thanks for making me feel special. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you were special i was excited to meet you but at the end of the day just like we talked about earlier like if it was meant to be it was meant to be and i feel like everything aligned perfectly yeah. for us to to meet for a reason yeah so for me healthy relationship is just like what you said we have to be aligned our goals you know where we want to be in the future we want to both build an empire we both want to help people out to me it's more of like children like mm -hmm. i want my legacy to be an orphanage because mm -hmm. i have traveled the world for the most part and i have seen poverty and i have seen children suffering everywhere and you know to me they're so helpless like when you're an adult you can do things you know you have options a lot more than children yeah so i feel like children that needs most help like those are the ones i kind of want to like give my attention and hopefully someday i can do that and build a safe home for all these like orphans yeah you will and we will we're yeah. well on our way to make that happen yeah it's giving back is the ultimate um love and return you know like our life wouldn't mean anything if we don't give back right yeah and we both agreed and you're a good person that's why i'm with you and hopefully we'll have that happen soon oh yes we will yeah <laughs> Maybe sometimes too, sometimes too good of a person that people don't know how to deal with it and an unhealthy relationship looks like is i've been to a bunch of them so you know like i was engaged before and i was in a very unhealthy relationship where my family and friends notice and you know they you don't really see it when you're in one but the people that loves you who's looking from outside always pays attention to those no matter what right mm -hmm. and i do appreciate my family and friends for recognizing that and you know make me recognize it myself so i'm just glad i'm out of it but you learn you live and learn basically and i when i hop in this relationship with you i knew better and i know what i want and i know what i don't want so i'm prepared <laughs> yeah I, I said it was perfect timing yeah this is definitely the healthiest relationship i've ever been in Good. Psychologically, <laughs> emotionally, and physically, because you're eating more plant-based. <laughs> yes. Uh, what else? Who liked who more? Is this from the beginning? Because I think you did. <laughs> I liked you more? No. Who said I love you first? <laughs> you said like, not love. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yes, I did say I love you. I did. Did I? When did I say it? I don't remember, but I remember you told me you said it first. That's all I remember. <laughs> we, we had some pretty crazy experiences with like Joshua Tree and Big Bear. and. Um, oh, you're right. No, I indirectly said it. I think it was in Joshua Tree. Yeah. 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 But no, we definitely took a liking to each other pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where we can't be apart for more than two days. Yeah. I think, I think the, well, re, up to, up till recently, I think the longest we've ever been apart was like 48 hours um but then you have to go to la for some for some trips and stuff so i was like five days but most time we're on facetime or talking morning yeah. night yeah well we love each other though so, and we we do a lot of things together like literally like we work together we we work out together we live together so huh, hold up. So i don't get tired of her <laughs> thanks you're about to marry me i hope not <laughs> <laughs> like spending time with your partners friends and family um well yeah i spent a lot we spent a lot of time with your mom i think that's a person we in California. yours yeah it's probably your circle that we spend the most time with 
Um, and then, Danielle, we didn't really see her. I saw her once. <laughs> but it's pretty much your mom. You met some friends. Yeah, I met some friends, a lot of family, relatives, cousins, aunts, uncles. Um, yeah, let's spend time with your family. Yeah, we probably might, we were de- doing stuff with your mom almost every weekend. Yeah, she loves you. First one, she said, marry this one. Yeah. <laughs> So I appreciate that. Um, your family, I finally got to spend time in Quebec. Mm-hmm. And they're nothing but wonderful. And I gained four pounds because your mom cooks so well. <laughs> That's in five <laughs> That's good food. days. Yeah. So, no, I have nothing but good things to say on and off camera. Your mom and dad are just like the best host. Um, made me feel so welcome and warm. Made me feel like part of the family. You know, no matter how hard it was to speak in English, they tried their hardest. And I really appreciate that because, you know, they made me feel like um part of the family. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I just love them so much. And I do look forward. And your brothers are amazing. They're funny. And they're like... They're stronger than me now. What the heck happened? <laughs> I know. We're not going to show you guys that. But yeah. <laughs> there was some kick arm my, wrestling happening. They kicked my butt at uh, arm wrestling. The last time <laughs> I saw them, they were like little kids. And now they're bigger than me. Yeah. They're like, they're definitely like, you know, really, the whole family is just fun and funny and good people and kind. So thank you for taking me and having me meet all your relatives. Well, not all, most. Yeah, it was a big chunk of them. So, yeah, and it's, I really do enjoy it because we stayed with your parents for 11 days. Yeah. And I think I chatted with your mom and dad every single day. And at the end of the trip, I didn't want to leave. (laughs) <laughs> like, everyone was em- everyone was emotional <laughs> yeah, and they cried and it made me really sad too but i'm just happy that i get to see them again and i'm going to be part of the family which i am now so that's great yeah so thank you you're welcome it was a good trip <laughs> when did you know i was the one <laughs> mm. Big Bear. That was the whole point of that trip. I was in Joshua Tree. That was before that. Joshua Tree, I started to like, I kind of knew in Joshua Tree, but Big Bear was a confirmation. That's why that trip was so intense. People are probably wondering what's in like, yeah. Big we Bear. Did, we, we, had, we, we did our own little ceremony. We'll put it this way. <laughs> um. And yeah, I had some cool revelations and the whole intention that I set forth for that weekend is to know if like Ivy's the one. And then you got to see a side of me that no one ever got to see. My parents, like no one in my life up to this date has never seen that part of me. Like it's basically the the kid part of me that is carrying the weight of the world. And I was able to like just be that kid. It's making me tear up. But I was a really emotional and intense weekend. And that was like the confirmation, like I can be myself with her. Yeah, um, I think you were afraid to show that, but you did anyways. And Oh, yeah, I wanted to freaking die. It was so intense. And I was just supporting you the whole time. And what you thought I was going to probably get turned off was like nothing to me it was just like oh okay this is you i accept you and we all have our dark sides and demons and baggages right and yours is like not even (laughs) what i thought it was gonna be yeah i mean to you it's probably massive but to me it was just like oh thank god it's just that yeah you know what i probably wants to say what we did in big bear (laughs) Yeah. Are you, are you comfortable with it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I've never said this publicly. And at the end of the day, like, I've been having a big conversation with Ivy about, like, just me being me and allowing myself to, to not be judged and to come a place from, like, I'm just going to do me and whatever happens, happens. But the first ceremony that I did when I was in L.A. was a mushroom ceremony. And that was the most healing experience that I ever had in my entire life. I would give away everything to read to like for that experience i would give away all the money uh, house all of it to start from scratch to feel the way i felt that was the most life-changing experience i've ever had and then when we were in big bear we had our own little ceremony in, in big bear and the whole intention i set forward was um i want to know if ivy's the one because you know we, we were doing a lot of back and forth like traveling between simi and, and venice and there was a lot of things happening and i was like is this 
you know, I need confirmation. Like, I love her. I want to be with her, but I need to know. Because you were going to move to Costa Rica, right? Yeah, because I was going to move into so many things, like being a Canadian, applying for a visa. It was, it was a lot of work. And so I was like, I need to know if, like, this is going to happen. And so I set the intention. Um, and it was the roughest experience of my entire <laughs> life. Like, I literally wanted to, to die. And um, I was able to, yeah, just, like, release and let go and show Ivy who I really was. And that was that was pretty special. I don't know if I've said this on a podcast. I've never said this on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I'm not a cookie-cutter clean boy. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm really glad you showed me who you are inside because i know that that was very important to you and you had so much fear of showing the real you i didn't even know that it just happened really? i was like oh shit yeah meanwhile i was having a different experience yeah you're definitely having a different experience <laughs> i'm like just like i'm so bright <laughs> you're like it's beautiful lights and color i'm like it's dark and painful <laughs> i don't like this yeah um it was it happened perfectly yeah and i was I'm glad I was able to support you through that darkest time. Yeah. So, yeah, I think those experiences allowed us to move closer together and to heal and process some stuff. That's when you knew I was the one. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, one one thing I always, that was always valued in a partner is someone that is willing to do the work, mm -hmm. right? Like so, to, to me, and again, everyone's different to me, someone that's complacent that doesn't want to grow that's a huge turn off for me. Right. Right. Like everyone always has the opportunity to improve and get better and to go for more for uh, in life. And I, I just could never be with someone that's complacent and you're always looking to like better yourself and level up. Thank you. Same. Um, I would never be with a partner that's just happy or they are. <laughs> I mean, it's very, you know, that's, some people are, and yeah. I give but just them that doesn't credit want for more. that. Right. Like, yeah. Doesn't want to grow is what I meant. Yeah. You know, I want constant, we talked about this earlier. I want constant growth, whether that's mm -hmm. in relationship, career, love, family, like growing is evolution. Mm -hmm. Life is evolution. You have to keep evolving. Right. And with that, I need a partner that will do that with me and help each other grow for a the better if not for the best um so with you i found that and when we were i think moving around that's when was this that i knew you were the one um maybe it was a bit later to me right because i'm very skeptical with relationships since i've been single for so long too yeah and especially with guys like i really wanted to know like if you're there for the long haul mm. so when you decided to stay in LA I think that was it I want to pay 10 grand for a visa <laughs> like yo he's in it it's putting money it. where his mouth is <laughs> right and it's just um <laughs> there were so many times that you just keep showing up for me and oh I know which one it was we had a big fight and it was almost going to break us up, right? Do you remember? Yeah, we had a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> but then I usually my ammo is to run away. Mm -hmm. And it's always been that way. Because it's easier to run away than to deal with the issues, right? But this time, I decided to stay. And I was willing to do the work and talk about the issues and work it out. That's when I knew you were special because I would not do that for anybody else. And I'm just like, okay, something here because you definitely like have my heart for me like not to run away, for me to like stay because it's the hardest thing I have to do. Mm -hmm. And most of my life I got, you know, that name, the runner for a reason. And I know you were scared of that too because I did tell you my past and what I used to do. But hey, I worked hard for you to not run. <laughs> I had a hard conversations together. Yeah. And yeah. there's multiple times you had to literally stop me from <laughs> running. Yeah, I was like, I'm not getting out the door frame. <laughs> they were talking this out. Yeah. So <laughs> now I do appreciate that. And yeah, and I decided that day, that night, that you are the one because you never gave up on me. No matter how hard it got, you wanted me there to stay with you. 
and who am I to like turn my back around on that for someone to genuinely be there for you and ready to face life with you so thank you you're welcome and I love you and then you moved to freezing cold Canada so I know <laughs> yeah, now I know, I know you're, you're committed I'm like where is the tissue are you happy with the intimacy you share uh, absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I never talk about is sex on the podcast or oh, we're talking about or, sex or social media. Intimacy, but okay. I know what you told me before the audio cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here in Sorry. real time. This is not the replay. Okay, so um, I'm very sexual. I like. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> that was hard for me to find a partner actually that could keep up. To be honest, don't judge me, people. Um, that means I have healthy. Healthy hormones, healthy needs. <laughs> and on the opposite, you weren't really used to that in the beginning. Uh, no, because, yeah, with my ex, they had cancer, so I, there was no, like, there was no intimacy, basically, for the last, like, two, three years. And, um, yeah, so now we have daily. <laughs> or twice a day. It's, yeah, it's for sure a seven minimum a week. It's very healthy. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a part of the routine at this point yeah we scheduled it morning or before bed um, but i think it's very important for a couple to actually share intimacy right like i mean some probably are fine without it i'm not judging people it's different for every couple but for us it's very important it's just makes our day better <laughs> and it does make your day better <laughs> and it's just just the hugging it doesn't need to be sex at times we're just very affectionate with each other you know like the kissing and the holding hands and watching tv together and cuddling that's every single day we don't yep. miss that and it's not fake because no one's around we're just like doing it because we truly really enjoy each other so to me this is very very actually different from what i'm used to because i'm usually not affectionate <laughs> with partners and in fact, like I hate public display of affection. I get disgusted by those people until I met you. And I'm one of those now. You know, we kiss in public, we hug, we hold hands, we hug even more. And like, we don't care. It's just you and I against the world type thing. Yeah, we're definitely in our own little bubble, for <laughs> sure. And there's so many times that people acknowledge that, right? They're like, say a lot of nice things about us want to take pictures of us so i yeah. mean it's definitely felt around us so yeah i guess it's that sucks very important yeah keeps you healthy <laughs> vegan men do it better <laughs> uh, what else i wonder if she's gonna clip that for instagram <laughs> is it like there's a meme about that because in the game changers there's one with like when the they're doing a science the experiment where guys are eating like burrito with like beans and rice and some with like steak and some with chicken and the level of cholesterol and how it affects your erection. So there's like actually like a it's a scene in the Game Changer documentary and people so made memes vegan. about vegan men do it better. They have a stronger <laughs> erection. That's what it said in the documentary. Well there you go. Yeah. Eat your veggies. <laughs> Eat your veggies, yeah. <laughs> best moment in your relationship so far um are you smiling while recalling that moment the best moment well there's a lot of them i i feel like not say like smiling but joshua tree and big bear were two really big weekends more on like a an emotional connection side that i remember um and then my birthday weekend you took me where we just uh no phones for three days like in a cabin in the woods like that was the best that makes me smile that made me like at a really good time because it was just us there was no no phone no instagram no nothing happening yeah we entertain each other yeah what about you <laughs> oh joshua tree it has to be joshua tree that was like the most emotional i've ever been i poured my heart on the table for you and you know it paid off <laughs> obviously it was definitely a pivotal moment in our relationship that weekend yeah 
So it still makes me smile just because I remember and recall how that felt and it was just amazing and just so much emotion and so much love. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, was, a, it was a weekend where we let go of if things could go wrong or if things didn't work out and we were just like fully accepting of what would come and to not trying to control it. Yeah, we didn't force anything. It's basically, you know, but we just went with the flow and the flow took us to Canada <laughs> and it's, it's, engaged. It was, it was great tax-wise. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to wait a few months before we can go back in the States. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, we're two big kids, so we just like doing anything and playing and playing Scrabble in English when it's both our it's second like, language. Yeah, we're both on our phones just Googling words. <laughs> Making up words. We fight. We're very competitive with each other. Yeah, we are competitive. As nice as he is and he looks, <laughs> he's a feisty when it comes to like playing pool, uh, Scrabble. What else? It's in my DNA. I feel like that's why I've had so Golf. much success in my life because like if I do something, like I want to be good at it. Yeah. It's hard for me to not want to be good at something that I take on, which is why I'm really careful about what I take on, which is why I say no fast because yeah, I don't want to take on anything. I think we have most of our disagreements while we're playing games. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Nobody wants to lose. Yeah. Um, so that's great. What else? What is the quality you love most about each other? Mm. What is this good? Yeah. For for sure, I don't know if there's like, uh, like your childlike energy, like your joy for life. I really enjoy that because I feel like most people at a certain point just like let go of it. Right? They get beat up by life, which, you know, you've had your, your, your hard times, but you're still... You're still joyful. You're still excited about life. I've had my hard times and I know how hard it is to stay joyful for, for, for life. And so like, that's one part I really like about you. Um, and the other part is just your, your level of maturity. All right. Yeah. You have a bit more life experiences than I do. So <laughs> it's, uh, when there's situations that come, like you understand the bigger picture sometimes and I miss it and you choose not to say anything about it because you just want me to go through it. And then when at the end of it, you're like, oh, yeah, I knew that. I just wanted to let you go through it and learn that for yourself. So like that, I do appreciate that you don't interject when it wouldn't serve me if you did interject. If that makes sense. Yeah, I wouldn't put you in danger. If that's what you're yeah. <laughs> you're like, I'll let you die. But no, um, thank you for saying that. And for me, the best quality is you always showing up and. From that, I'm learning to do the same, right? Like, I'm not perfect by all means. Close. <laughs> yes, baby. <laughs> hey, ladies, you got to think you're perfect. <laughs> um, but no, I really do appreciate you showing up each time, you know, especially during hard times. I'm not, like you said, I always, I'm f always joyful for the most part. But when I do feel down, you're there for me. You're always offering to help you sometimes try to solve things which sometimes i don't want you to do i just want you to listen but working on it yeah. <laughs> but i mean you mean well everything you do is out of love which i appreciate you have the biggest heart that i know from anyone in this world and to be part of your life is such an honor for me and really want to be part of it because of who you are. Like, everything gets taken, career, money, all this. The core you is who I want to be. You're making me cry. I'm, I'm <laughs> crying too. Oh, wow, okay, this is dramatic. Um, yeah, I don't think it's very rare to find someone and really connect with your heart I know that I gave up as you know I in one hand on one hand I have my dream job on the other I have my dream man on which like 
I chose you, my dream man, right? Like, because life would mean nothing if you weren't in my life. So I'll always choose you. Oh, I love you, baby. Give me a kiss. Love you. Now I'm full of lipstick. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I got to wipe my lips after. <laughs> uh, thank you for saying that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been a challenging time moving to moving back to Canada. Because, yeah, it did mean a lot of sacrifices on, on your end. And I'm trying to take care as best as can of you. <laughs> and, you know, I'm excited that we work together now. It was a beautiful opening. And now we have a, a great schedule. We're recording a podcast in the afternoon. <laughs> and you're making me cry. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so next question. <laughs> All right, what's the next one? Future plans. Uh, future plans. I think the big debate now is trying to figure out where we're going to live. Right. Okay. Honestly, I think that's our biggest thing is because you're, yeah, you're obviously you're, you're American, I'm Canadian. So there's a, one of us has to petition the other to be <laughs> in one of the countries. Like um, and yeah, I, like on, yeah. on, on my end, you, like there's, it's obviously like if you, we petition me to go into the United States, then it changes things massively from a, a business standpoint because can eat, my corporation's Canadian and then it changes the tax ratio if I become a non-resident and so I would have to like reopen a new company in the States and dissolve and there's that whole shebang and cost that comes with that but at the same time like it's cold in Canada it's October and I'm freezing and I spent my last year and a half in Tulum Mexico and in LA with you and it was it was great I didn't miss the cold a bit I did miss like the cold weather but <laughs> not like that <laughs> this is too this is too cold so yeah I I like Finding out where we're going to live is the, is the biggest thing. We're pretty confident. We're 95% sure we're going to go back um, into the States. States. So that's the next step. And then it's obviously looking into starting a family and then continuing to have that impact in the world. Yeah, same. Future plan is, you know, do the wedding next year. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he forgot. That sounds special. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, My brain's like cost of moving. I was like cost of wedding. Uh, they will have a probably small wedding, but you know, like we want intimate wedding anyways, mm -hmm. just close friends and family. Also, um, I want us to decide where to live, but if it happens to be six months here and six months there, I have nothing against that. Looking forward to working with you and building this empire with you to help a lot more people like you said in your in the mission statement <laughs> the mission statement yeah well so just and for people listening so ivy is our new cmo for fit vegan coaching so chief marketing officer um and yeah what our, our mission statement is help ten thousand people get lean thrive and disease proof their body on plants by 2033 so that's the first milestone we're going for is going to have impacted the lives of ten thousand people so yeah, Ivy's on board with us, working yeah. full time and so helping for that mission. That, want to be part of that? Truly, I think it's a great mission statement, and you know, it really help a lot of people along the way. And on top of that, you know, we want to build a family, however that may look. Mm. Um, yeah, just help as many people along the way. This that's what we both enjoy doing. That is the future. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, and Tempe. Tempe's with and us now. Mr. Tempe, which is, where is he? He's, he's sleeping. He's down there. Tempe. He's in move. He's, yeah, he's knocked out. <laughs> he's with us. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty simple plan. Figure out where to live, get married, start a family, and have an impact. Yeah. Um, yeah I think we answered most of the questions. Okay. Well, I had one from my, that I showed from my Instagram. I was like, how is it working with your new boss? <laughs> uh, is that for me then? Yeah, it's for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can never call in sick. That yeah. That sucks. <laughs> um, but other than that, people think you work remote and you probably see each other all the time. Well, he's actually a bit different because he stays in his office. Yeah. And I stay everywhere else. Um, yeah. He tells me not to disturb him at certain times. So we respect that from mm -hmm. a workplace. We stay professional. We have meetings with the team. And 
I'm in another room with my own Zoom link. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not like we're next to each other just because we're in the same household. Yeah. So it's great. Other than that, you know, working with them. But the thing is, like, there's no off button at times because when you get ideas, we brainstorm, which is great because yeah. you, know, you want to keep the creative juices flowing. So I think it's good that, you know, we bounce ideas off each other and like, it's just any time, any day. We can talk about everything and anything. Like we're literally together 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> Besides when you go into your office and take a shower or whatnot. But, <laughs> um, but the fact that we can work together, be in a relationship together, cook together, go to the gym together. I mean, it's great because it's been over a year and we haven't gotten sick of each other. But we do understand that sometimes we need time apart. So you are very good at like giving me my own space, drawing me a bubble bath. Mm -hmm. And um, same thing, like if you need your own space, I let you do your thing. So I think, you know, that full understanding of each other and secure enough that we know we're not going anywhere. I think that's mm -hmm. the most important thing yeah. in a relationship because security stems out into everything that you do in life right like i know that i'm secure enough to know that i can trust you that you're loyal to me that i will love you for the rest of my life and you will too so from there it's like the freedom of just doing anything knowing that your partner is always going to be there is such a great feeling and just rare yeah yeah i love it we like yeah we we literally do everything together and so um, it makes me happy like and, and for the people listening like ivy literally does my workouts like she does full-on like my sets reps <laughs> exercise weight is different but still like you're still doing like pretty hard workouts that you're doing i know we're sitting on the couch watching tv and i just like lean on you and you're like my legs are so sore i can't i can't yeah, move I can't walk. <laughs> yeah so no ivy's doing a, a killer job so like all the new content that you guys are seeing like the new videos of me sitting on the couch sharing the content with my my mom which will probably be out by the time this episode is out like that's all ivy's idea um so yeah Thank you. All the great ideas are coming from her. Well, my boss is easy to work with. So <laughs> Sometimes. Like, I'll be honest, I'm not always the, the easiest to work with. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. Definitely want to talk a bit about the working from home aspect. As you, you, I want to share the experience when you came into my office. Like you, you come from the you come from the physical space of like working space, of working yeah. corporate. So when you need something, you just go into the person's office to ask for it. Like I'm not used to it. I've been doing online business for almost three years. And so we were, I was working and I saw she messaged me on Slack and I was like, oh, like I'll get back to her once I'm done this task. And then she like walked into the office. She's like, hey, I sent you a message. I yeah, like, I was like, I know where you are. Yeah, I'm yeah. next door. <laughs> like, why are you answering my message? I was like, oh, I saw it, but I'll answer later. I was like, I'm so not used to having someone being able to just barge in and be like, hey, this. I'm like, so yeah i close my door you know when i close my door then and when it's open it's different yeah so i learn fast i'm like great <laughs> yeah it's yeah it does require a lot of attention and focus like now having three companies and we're we're scaling like tremendously on the three of them it's it requires a lot of focus and time and yeah you know we wake up at like 5 a.m to work and we I, yeah we just do five to five i wake up at 5 a.m and i stop at 5 p.m and then we have like our alone time now with this new routine so it's basically 12 hours minus like our workout and, yeah. and eating food. So, yeah, those are pretty long days. Um, I mean, just because we work from home doesn't mean we can take it easier. I mean, obviously, you're very disciplined. You wake up at 5, which makes me wake up at 5-ish. Uh, well, I've been quiet a few nights. A few mornings, you continue so like, sleep. oh, hell no. But I got to <laughs> get up anyways because now I can't go back to sleep. See, that's love, guys. She wakes <laughs> up at 5 a.m. with you because you're a crazy, dedicated uh, person. Like my work starts at 8. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, yeah, I don't even know what time you start. Uh, yeah. For, for the majority of our team members, like, everyone's on their own schedule. Yeah. Yeah. I always hated having a boss. I was like, you need to work from this time to this time. And if you're done in six hours, I want you to do, like, something else for another two hours and waste your time. Like, if you're efficient and you're good at what you're doing, if it takes you half the time, then great. Like, you just shouldn't be punished yeah. for, you shouldn't be punished for being efficient at your job. So, like, yeah, you pretty much, call it, you work in whenever you want. I walk out to grab some food and she's, like, in the bed doing research on Instagram exactly. or writing. Still working. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. still working. It's fine. Like, that's the beauty of working from home. Yeah, I was like, oh, my God, 
what? I can do emails from my bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> I can be in the kitchen and working. It's great. I mean, I take the whole room and house and you just think. Yeah, you office. definitely. I come out, there's <laughs> iPads, computers, things everywhere. Yeah, I utilize every part of the house, okay? So. Yeah, that's all right. There needs to be a shift in energy. It's tough to always be in an office, even even if you're working from home. Yeah. Was there any other questions you want to go from the list? <laughs> turn ons and turn offs. In what way? <laughs> I know. There's so many. <laughs> Should we go turn ons first? Turn on? Yeah. What turns you on? You want me to go first? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your, your sexy outfits. That's what turns me on. Which I don't usually do because it's so cold in Canada. Yeah, it is cold I'm like in wrapped like a burrito every day. Yeah, but definitely your sexy outfits. But also like on another side, that's not like on the sexual side, is when you and I have like really deep conversation about like life. Like I love that like big time because it's really hard to find people that are willing to have that level of conversation. You forgot another one. I was scratching my back. <laughs> no, another one. Besides from that, yes. I don't know what the other one is. The gym when they work hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When I see Ivy work out hard, like that's, that's so sexy to me. Because, like, yeah, you're just, like, actually pushing. You're actually giving it a shot. Like, I, you know, there's a lot of girls that work out, and, like, it burns, and I just stop. And, like, no, nah, you're pushing. You got a vein in your neck, and you're just like, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I yeah. tell you, actually, in the gym. <laughs> I'm always crying, but I try to look cute still. Yeah. Um, yeah, so turn-offs? Boy, you do your turn-ons. <laughs> Pass it off to me. So I know how to say things back. Uh, it's bad. Turn-ons. Um. I love your eyes. I just like stare at it. You have the kindest eyes, which I'm sure you've heard a lot of times. And it's true. It's just like I get lost in them. So I just stare at you like a stalker. <laughs> but anyway, so kidding aside, what else? I love when you hug me and just cuddles turns me on so much and kisses and everything else. <laughs> Oh, when it's morning or when it's nighttime or when you're in the same room as me. <laughs> yeah, basically just you. Um, yeah, that's it. Turn offs. When we fight, that'd pretty much be it. Like if we're tired and impatient, like that's pretty much it. Yeah, same. Yeah. I don't think there's nothing else besides that. And when you fart. <laughs> What? I don't <laughs> fart. All the men out there, we don't have any gas at all. Yeah. <laughs> I love you anyways. I'm not going to expose you. I'm, I'm going to be fart too. <laughs> I burp a lot. It smells like roses though. So. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I have no shame. I love my burpees. You both stuff. have no shame. <laughs> yeah. That's when you know we've been comfortable with each other too long. Yeah. We use the bathroom together. Yeah. Not in the same bowl, but... <laughs> no. <laughs> You're going deep on this podcast, all right? That'd be the hey, next podcast. I'm fine podcast. with it. I'm fine with it. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're just so real. Like, I, I don't think people realize what we really are in person. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, we might look proper, but we're just real people. Like, we just say what we want to say. We're mm -hmm. honest to a fault. Um, we want good for other people more than people want for themselves yeah. and we work our asses off in anything that we do and we're competitive <laughs> um, yeah so I guess another question is also lessons learned from this relationship oh that's a big one uh, so learning not to say no first I'm working on that <laughs> You so, should explain why. Because, so, I know that the, so I'll, I'll, I'll go far, I'll go a little bit further back. The biggest distraction to, the biggest thing that would prevent someone from having success is distraction. And distraction can be phone, can be TV, um, it can be social events, but it can also be taken on too many things on your plate. And so I'm so focused on what I want to accomplish that I'm very careful about what I put on my plate. And so in the past, I've overloaded my plate where 
I had too many things going and I was like, I can't fulfill the thing that is the most important to me. And so I've trained myself to just say no, but now I say no to everything at first. I say no. And then I listen and then I make a decision because I'm so scared to like commit to something that I'm like, fuck, I don't want to actually, I can't actually fulfill on this because I really don't care. It's not as important to me. It's a distraction to the things that I want to do. So to a fault, I will say no, listen, and then make a decision. And so I have to learn that doesn't always work in relationship. <laughs> Business is different, but like in relationship, like she just doesn't feel heard and she doesn't feel like she can share. And so like, I understand that. So I'm working on being like, oh, cool idea. Can you elaborate <laughs> and then make a decision? Thank you. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I don't want to overcommit or distract myself from the things that I'm working on. And so just very careful with with what i take on so that's a big lesson that i've been working on and then just um when we're having we have our fights or we have a hard conversation that it's okay to not resolve it at night sometimes and to let it go uh but i would like my dad trained me so much i'm like you resolve these things right now so that's another one that that, that i'm working on and uh not being a little brat that's a big one so that's actually the reason why I hired a Tony Robbins coach because you told me I was a little brat. Yeah. Because I didn't when I didn't have things that I wanted, I got I got upset. Yeah, when you don't get your way, like a yeah. little brat. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because the work with Tony Robbins coach, basically like life coaching, made a huge difference because to me and kind of like you, like we came from we have you have we have a different background, but to me, I feel like I came from like nothing. Everything I have in my life, I have built, I have owned, I have worked my ass off i have freaking suffered to be where i'm at in in this place financially and in my life and so like i work so hard for the things that i have that like if i want something and i work for it i want it to happen the way it is because i worked my ass off to have it so i have to understand that like that doesn't always translate to relationship right and business is different if i work my ass off and i pay for something i want it to be that way but it doesn't work in relationship all the time. And so I have to be open to be a, a bit more flexible. So that's the work that I've been doing with my coach and my mentors to like just chill a bit because I'm really intense. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> people, don't, people don't, I don't think people know that. No, because you seem like very chill and just like, you know, always like laid back. But what they don't know is like your personality is really like zero to a hundred. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it does take a moment, like step back to fully understand the whole picture at times, right? Which I move you're fast. learning. Yeah. yeah. So I really appreciate that. You always seek help first thing first. If you can't resolve it yourself, you always look for someone to help you out with it and work on it. So I appreciate that you do the work and not many people do, right? Like mm -hmm. it's just easy to like forget or yeah. like be complacent. Um, so lesson learned for me is again, from you, I've learned a lot, a lot more than I've learned from any previous partners. I'll say number one is showing up and not running away. So, you know, talk our problems out. I'm getting better. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I admit to faults now, which I never really used to. So I'm like, nope, not my fault. Never. Yeah, I'm perfect. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So now, you know, I realize I <laughs> am wrong at times <laughs> and I do apologize for those and we can move forward and talk things out. So it's great. Um, second is working really hard. I never really, I guess I've always worked hard, but it was kind of like always been given to me, like I said, an opportunity and it's up to me to take it and then run with it. Right. Mm -hmm. With you. I felt like, okay, I had to, like, the job that I had, it was, like, my dream job, right? I had to give that up. But then I learned that I can always start over with you. I learned that from your past experiences that you did that and you thrive. Yeah. So my fear of not succeeding kind of, like, diminished slowly, seeing how you were in your, your experiences and all. And I have so much trust in you that I know you'll take me there with you. So I guess that's lesson learned, like learn how to trust more. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, like that's that. That's why I, like I like investing in myself 
and in us because if we lose all of this i can rebuild it pretty quickly because i know how but i've done it a few times so it's always like a there's a there's a confidence to it right i feel like it's kind of like if you like to take boxing classes and you're never in a position where you have to defend yourself. Like there's just more confidence there because you know how to defend yourself. So I feel like I know how to defend myself from life because I've been through so much shit. And I've been beat up. I've been beat up like a lot with my hands tied behind my back and had to restart so many times that like there's a confidence that like I can rebuild everything that I want to if I want to. Um, so yeah, we'll always be okay. Yay. Yeah. Help. Any other questions? Any Any last few ones? I think is... Man, this podcast, we're going on an hour and 10 minutes. This is awesome. This is our longest podcast. <laughs> Second longest podcast. First one was with my nutrition and training coach, uh, David. Mm. How often do you think of your partner? I'm with her every day, all the time. <laughs> Even if I don't want to, it's in front of me. We're always there. 24-7. <laughs> um, How often do you laugh together? Like all the time. All the time, yeah. We make fun of each other. Yep. <laughs> in a nice way you have to take life you know like not so serious and like we keep growing so yeah we're different people than when we first met for sure oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're like plants yeah you know like you just have to keep nurturing each other watering it like i was one experience i had was like with an ex was when they said, not they, it's one person. <laughs> he said, quote unquote, I didn't bloom. And I didn't understand what that meant then, right? Mm -hmm. And now I do. And to me, I didn't bloom. And he's right, I didn't bloom. And I accept that now. But there were reasons behind that because I wasn't with the right partner. So are you, if you weren't with the right partner, you're not going to grow, right? So we're like plants. You have your environment plays a big role. It's the condition of the weather, right? Watering it, temperature, um, nutrients, care. I didn't get all that from my partner. So I was stagnant. Mm -hmm. So I didn't boom. But with you... And this relationship I'm in now, I feel like I'm in full bloom, like crazy flowers everywhere um, and still growing. So I do appreciate you for providing such a great environment for me and being the support system that I need. And just let me bloom to my fullest. So, yeah. You're welcome. Like the beautiful flowers <laughs> I, I get you on a weekly basis. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think that's... Uh, and then, you know, same on your end. I feel like having a partner that pushes you to become better. Like, I've definitely had to level up multiple times since we've been together. Because you would point something out and I would get upset about it. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> she's right. Like, I got to do, I got to improve that aspect of my life. And then you point something else out. And I'm like, I would get upset. And then I was like, yeah. she's right. <laughs> Let me just improve on it. So, yeah, definitely having a partner that pushes you to become better. I think the difficult times that we had was when you always felt attacked by me when i say things mm -hmm. that didn't agree with you right yeah. whereas for me it was coming from the heart and love and compassion and i just wanted you to be better and i point these things out because i feel like you need to improve those mm -hmm. but through time you understood that and you actually you know listen and you know that I'm always going to be on your side no matter what. So whatever I tell you, it's never an attack. It's just love and I care. Yeah, but I think that took time to get there. We definitely had to learn to trust each other more. Because at first it's coming from, like you're in a relationship, but there's no like certainty yet. And so it just feels like an attack to like your core of who you are. And then you're like, <laughs> you just want, obviously want to defend yourself. But now I know that you love me and we've been together long enough that when you say something, I was like, oh, she does have my best intention at heart. Yeah. Just at the, at the start, it's like, what's she doing? What's she saying this? <laughs> exactly. What else? Um, yeah, was there any last questions you have on there? Can you recall the most romantic moment with your partner? The most romantic moments. Oh, I'm like thinking of like, when we were in Vegas, we're in our one year when we were in San Francisco. Oh, yes. 
yeah san francisco was a good trip romantic um times i made you some bubble bath <laughs> some warm bath that's all you recall there's a lot well, there's mine, a lot more. We had a lot. I was Grand Canyon, okay, in my attempt to do the most romantic New oh, Year's yeah. Eve <laughs> and New <laughs> Year's Day. Yeah, that was a that was a fun time. Well, this is great. I'm going to tell everyone this. If ever there's no snowstorm <laughs> in yeah. the Grand Canyon, um, I took you to Grand Canyon. Well, you New had the Year's idea. Day. I drove there. That was a long drive. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my idea is they'll take yeah. us to Grand Canyon for New Year's Eve to see the last sunset yeah. of the year and witness the first sunrise of the new year. Yeah. And yes, you're welcome, people. You should do that yeah. <laughs> without the snowstorm. But it happened to have a snowstorm. We didn't see anything. For sunset, yeah. And we barely saw some sun yeah. peeking through the clouds but we made the best out of it and i thought that was romantic that we got to freeze our ass off <laughs> together oh yeah it was cold <laughs> there's ice everywhere yeah the sunrise was nice though like we we kind of woke up a little bit later but at least it cleared out and i actually got to see the grand canyon because this is my first time there yeah so i mean I, that was a very romantic attempt and we made the best out of everything whether they turned out good or bad which you know i really gotta like you to have that experience yeah i love you yeah love you too like, <laughs> we always make the most out of each experience that we have yeah like we always as much as i'm very regimented during the week when it's time to, to work like we when there's things that go off plan we always like adapt to it for like a it was for what? No, our one year was it six months in San Francisco? It was one year in Whistler. We we're in Whistler when we celebrated our one year. We went to that hotel and that nice it little just feels restaurant. Like we've been together forever. Yeah, I know. We we've traveled a lot together. Yeah, I think yeah, we months. did celebrate our one year in Whistler. That was fun too. Yeah, that That's was good great. food. And we did ATV. Yeah, we did ATV. Evie bought me an ATV, so I got to ride around, be a little kid as much <laughs> as I could because there was a line. So I would let I would let Ivy like move forward and then i would just floor the four-wheeler because i grew up on four-wheelers and snowmobile and dirt bikes and all that so i would just floor it and just spin everywhere it was really fun going uphill in the rocks um yeah yeah. i was really good at it so we gotta do it during winter (laughs) with with snowmobile that's gonna be fun can't wait yeah (laughs) good well i I think those are all the questions we had right any last questions you want to ask or you're good um no i think that's a lot of questions yeah well honestly if people listen to all the way to the end i think like an hour and 17 for the recording is probably a little bit shorter for the actual podcast so what i want to say is if you made it until the end thank you very much for tuning in until the end and uh, being interested in our um personal relationship personal relationship (laughs) hope you got some value from it you know it's always a work in progress um and uh, yeah we're always looking on working and improving ourselves. and if you guys want to have ivy back on the show then just private message her or me uh, on instagram uh, i'll put i'll put her instagram down below too in the, sh- in the show notes so i want to say a massive thank you to everyone for tuning in uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast and baby you want to say anything else i love you uh, i love you too <laughs> no, thank you for having me and it's definitely you know i'm so used to talking to you and seeing you in your podcast and just happy to be part of it and hopefully we shed some light to a lot of your audiences and they pick up some good stuff and <laughs> and don't judge us for the not so good stuff um yeah but or judge us it's fine we are who we are <laughs> but i do <laughs> hope you guys find this kind of love because i never felt this before and i had to wait my whole entire life for one and it's finally here so don't settle ladies and gentlemen um always make sure that you know don't compromise your values and beliefs and who you are for someone because if you do then it's just gonna fail but if you do Mm. find the right person with the same values and everything and you see eye to eye and everything it's worth fighting for which i'm doing Mm. love you love you all right guys thank you very much for listening to the podcast episode we will see you in the next one ciao